my name is Alana Chamberlain, and I have the pleasure today to talk to Dr. Miguel Hernan, who is giving this year's Richard D. Remington Methodology Lecture for the American Heart Association Epi Lifestyle Conference. Dr. Hernan, the title of your talk is Do Lifestyle Interventions Work? The Promises and Challenges of Causal Inference from Cohort Studies. Can we first begin um, with a little bit more information about what your lecture is about? Sure. Um, you just said it. I'll be talking about our lifestyle interventions and how we learn whether they work using cohorts, uh, which is a very important component of this. I, I'll be talking about how, how the use of observational data from, from large cohort studies can be used to um, improve upon current methods to estimate the causal effect of lifestyle interventions. And, and by that, I mean any causal questions of the sort of, uh, if I quit smoking, will, 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 will that lower my risk of heart disease? Or should I exercise? And if so, how often and how intensely? And uh, should I eat more fish rather than red meat? all those questions that are very important for people that we ask ourselves uh, very often are the questions that I, I will be dealing with. Can you please provide us what you consider some of the promises of this work? Well, cohort studies are amazing resources for research and they're very promising in, in, that, in that sense because these are the studies that typically enroll a large number of people followed over long periods of time, so we can we can study long term health outcomes. Something that we cannot do, for example, in in randomized trials. And they also have longitudinal data, data that is not only on the lifestyle uh, behaviors themselves, but also for the outcomes and for the confounders that are needed. So. There are a lot of things that, in principle, we should be able to do. A lot of cover questions that we should be able to answer using using cohorts. And in addition to some of these promises, I'm sure there are also uh, several challenges. Can you please also pr provide some um, examples of some of the challenges? Let me talk about uh, about two uh, first, and then I'll mention a third one, which is actually the one that my that my talk will focus on. Two key challenges of causal inference from cohort studies are measurement error and confounding. Measurement error because it's really hard to measure uh, diet or physical activity over long periods of time. Confounding because even if we can measure those things well, then we have the problem that uh, people who, who exercise more also are people who tend to eat differently or to have better access to healthcare. And these are all confounding factors that make it hard to isolate the effects of physical activity. So th those, are, those are very big problems of cohort studies. And over time, I'm sure that we will be able to, to solve some part, partly those problems by collecting better data or by linking to electronic health records or or two other data sources. But my talk is going to focus on another problem that is um, often not recognized as being very important, but I try to convince the audience that it is a very important problem, which is that many times we don't ask our causal questions, our lifestyle interventions in ways that, are, that make them relevant, relevant for decision making relevant for the people who are asking these questions about should I eat differently? Should I exercise more? And um, my talk is going to focus on how we articulate causal questions, our lifestyle interventions in such a way that they lead to answers that are useful for decision making, both by individuals and by public health officers. And the way in which but one way in which we can do that is by being very clear about what is the hypothetical randomized experiment that we would like to conduct. That's our target trial. 
and then emulating that target trial in an explicit way. And um, can you please provide some of your best adv advice that you would give researchers hoping to leverage this type of work? I don't know if this is the best advice, but one, uh, one important piece of advice um, is making sure that we ask questions that are relevant for decision making. Questions that um, are not of the type of, well, let's compare people who have a BMI of 30 with people who have a BMI of 25. Because that's not a very useful question because nobody can go instantaneously from a, v for, from a BMI of 30 to a BMI of 25. So if we want to help people make decisions, we have to ask questions in which we specify how uh, weight loss is going to happen and over which period of time that is going to happen, maybe losing 5% of your body weight every year as opposed to going instantaneously from a BMI of 30 to a BMI of 25. And, and one, one uh, good way of being able to specify these questions in such a way that they are relevant for decision making is to think about the target trial. Think about what is the hypothetical experiment that we would like to do and then emulate it as explicitly as possible using the data from the observational cohorts. Thank you, Dr. Hernan. It was nice talking with you today. Um, and very excited about your lecture on do lifestyle interventions work? The promises and challenges of causal inference from cohort studies. Thank you very much.